So welcome everyone to our Monday Global Heart Resonance Call. And during these 40 days of Love Lives Here, we're focusing our themes in resonance with the themes of inspiration. So um, reconnection with self, reconnection with each other. That's who we are right now. Coming up, reconnection with Earth and reconnection with the sacred within all life. So I'm Shelley Darling, and today I'm here with Michelle Pollard, who um, is really the inspiration for today's call. And um, we have a number of us that are uh, good of the whole resonance stewards here. So we'll be opening with a beautiful call, and welcome to all of you that are joining us and watching the replay. If you're watching from your computer screen, you can click up in the right-hand corner and get either speaker view or gallery so you can see us all. And if you're on a phone, we um, invite you to go get come in through the Zoom app and then you'll be able to see us and see who is in this circle of love with you by scrolling left. So um, with that, we'll begin our call. Ah, so the invitation always is just to connect in and embody this practice of what we're describing the home frequency where we are stewards of good of the whole um, literally and um, we're inviting you in to dive into this unified field of love with us and as stewards of good of the whole we are really just coming together to cultivate this ethos of wholeness understanding that we're whole beings contributing to and in service of a greater whole. So I invite you to just take a breath at that, to really understand this hour that we come together is a restorative practice. It is a practice of deeply listening into the emerging field, listening for how it wants to express itself through you and as you, And that it also is providing uh, a space of mutual support, safety, as we activate this field. All right. So we always start out with a resonance. And given that this morning, um, I hope you all checked out Facebook Live. Michelle went on uh, for the first time. So we just congratulate her and, and all um, the other resonance stewards that are stepping in in that way. And we're pulling that... Um, theme of inspiration, connecting with each other here this morning. And we always open with a resonance, and Michelle will be sharing the, um, the essence of this call, and then we will open it up to everyone to participate. And I'll be giving just a few guidelines <laughs> for those that you can see. We have a little earth angel joining us here this morning. <sighs> so taking a breath. And we'll just take a few moments and close our eyes, as long as you're not driving. And relaxing in to our body, to this beautiful relationship, as Michelle was describing this morning, this of the heart and the mind. The mind really tracking that vibrational field of the heart as it generates this force of love. We're coming here to ground. So just taking a moment and deepening into the field. Feel your feet on the ground, connecting with the mother. And as you're breathing up into your own heart, feel that energy rising of reception, of being nurtured, as if you were just imagine your feet just on the roots of a big live oak tree. Just feeling her presence as she bringing and embracing this gentle force of love. And as we're breathing, we're feeling that core magnetism, right? This electrical magnetic field that we are, and it, it rises up from the heart, bringing us in deep connection with our higher consciousness. And we open to receive that infusion, that transmission of love, 
our connection to the stars here this morning. And breathing that back down into your body, noticing on the exhale, you just, whoo, just, ha, ah, just letting go and letting yourself just really feel this liquid motion that we are. Because when we're soft and we're open and we're receptive, that's where the information will infuse and that's where we have the experience of embodiment, right? So inviting you to just simply be fully in that place, bringing all aspects of yourself here today for the greater good of the whole. So with that, I'm going to pass this beautiful virtual talking stick over to Michelle and she'll share our topic and I'll share a couple of guidelines and we'll open the call. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Um, so I don't know, <coughs> excuse me, if you had a chance to read it, but I'm going to put it out here in the field anyway. It's from a book called Tree Spirited Woman by Colleen Baldrica. And uh, I thought it fit really well with connecting with each other. One relationship cannot fulfill every need in one's life. In a lifetime, there will be many encounters with others. Some will be brief and others will form into longer relationships. Each person is put into one's life for a purpose. We are to learn from one another. Every person has needs and those needs are met by the many different relationships one has. A person may be put in your life not because of the need you have or the lesson you are to learn, but for the need or the lesson they are to learn. One must be open to all who come in contact with them, whether they are friends, strangers, acquaintances, or family. Each friend was a stranger once. Every relationship is a gift. How one treats others will affect every area of one's life. So today, let's you know, create more love and, and connect with the world and with others in a way that make it possible, this possible. And see if there's anything that's holding you back. What's holding you back? What opens us as a collective to a greater connection with others? So often, um, we want to live with an open heart and then it takes practice because there's limitations. Again, it's easy to open our heart to those that are easy to be loving with. But what about those other areas where we need more practice? And so that's really what um, rose when I was searching for this for today's call. And it feels like a beautiful, wonderful time as love lives here is in the 10 days of interconnectedness. And so now I'll open the, well, Shelly, do you want to lay some of the ground rules first and then we'll open it up? Okay. All right, so just a few guidelines. I don't know about you, but I have always had issue with rules, so <laughs> we'll just open to this gentle, um, these guidelines. So on this call, for those of you that are new, and I see a few new spaces here, um, we invite just a few things. One is when you're speaking, you feel that that essence is moving through you, um, please say your name, because we do have people that are on the phone, and they won't be able to see who's speaking. And really speaking in present time. So if you're sharing a story, sharing the bottom line, and really what is your experience in the moment with that right here, right now. And that we're all here consciously listening for what is evolving in the field. So we're really learning how to track this, this thread of conversation, if you imagine just a shuttle going through a tapestry. You know, each one of us being those threads. So we're listening for how is the field emerging? How is it um, bringing my, that conscious awareness to us as a collective? And please limit your contributions one to two minutes. Um, you can speak more than once. That's completely 
fantastic. Um, but just giving a space in between. So what we're doing is we're um, allowing a pause. And in the space, a pause is the place where we receive the information, where we're imbued with that essence of wholeness. And so we invite you to um, deepen into that liminal space. Take that time. And that's simply it. These are the guidelines. And um, please uh, feel free to, we, we, we always put this beautiful talking stick. Sometimes it's a stone. Today it looks like it's a stone wanting to go into the center. So feel free to just gently take the stone in your hand and, um, and speak from essence. So with that, uh, we open the field, as Michelle was saying, and feel free to share. And I'm complete, that's the last thing. Just let us know when you're done by saying I'm complete or something, aloha, or whatever works for you. <laughs> Hello. Hi, it's my first time with you, and I'm very grateful to be with you and that you all created this space to be together in the harmonic. And my name is um, Sunshine Houlihan, and I, <laughs> and I um, am also known as Daithy, Daithy Borges. And I um, awakened about two years ago, and it's been a fast path. And I just wanted to share with you how grateful I am, how long you all have been working for this, and that I had um, a beautiful dream from the field uh, two nights ago. And the dream was just that um, I was with some lovely beings, and they said, it is time for um, joy and that we have worked so hard, and now it is the celebration time, the time of, of holding joy. And I just wanted to share that with you today for those that just wanted to know that they have done their job so beautifully, and it is time to be joy. Thank you. I am complete. This is Oriana. I wanted to speak to joy and really feel that joy that uh, Sunshine Daisy was speaking to. <laughs> um, and most recently, I asked a question of Mark Gaffney and Barbara Marks Humbard, who I'm going to be seeing tomorrow in Portland. And the question that I came to was, they were sort of many parted, but I'll, I wanted to know if there were an original shame that we feel as that original separation. I wasn't brought up religious, so I didn't get indoctrinated with the original sin idea. I was feeling into this meditation I had done where I felt myself as the joy in the heart of God and as I was looking up at this dimension I was from, recognizing I'd fallen so far away, I couldn't get back again. Not the way I'd come. I'd have to innovate a pathway back. And that sense of falling and being separate was so profound. And 
it was really exploring into that sense that I came to this feeling, this deep feeling of shame. Like I had done something so wrong. And I'm wondering still, is that our sense when we first feel that separation? And if so, is it that we really must feel it again in order to heal it? And heal it at the most profound level, which for me is the level of the earth. I once talked with Ken Wilbur, and I told him of my experience of feeling this deep angst and fear for the, I, I didn't know what, it was nothing in my life that would account for it. But the next day I discovered that, uh, this was years ago, but North Korea had first tested a nuclear bomb. And I was feeling the world, the angst of the world in reaction and fear. And Ken Wilbur acknowledged me and acknowledged that, in fact, I could feel it that deeply. And I said, but Ken, if I can feel it at this level, there must be something I can do about it at this level. And so we talked further about um, different ideas and processes and what could, in fact, be worked with. But I kept looking for the most effective, efficient way. And it's led me to this shame, this intense feeling of being separate. And I'm feeling into it as an evolutionary who has the ability to transmute. And the only thing that separates us from that, as Mark has identified, is this gap that we feel from the level of which we are capable of feeling the world and the level of which we are capable of healing the world. And that gap in between is a break in intimacy, as Mark would say. And it's one that I'm exploring how we can cross that gap, how we can hold this world and heal that level of separation so that we can effectively, efficiently shift the vibration of the world and all of its inhabitants resonate with this higher frequency and vibration. Thank you for listening. I wanted to respond to you, Oriana. That was so beautiful. The resonance of, of source in your voice is so beautiful. And so as you have this resonance of source and this light in you, and you talk about the truth that many of us have experienced along the path of separation, of feeling separate, Along the path, we are healing this wherever we walk, with every place we go, with everyone we meet. And so you are doing this work, this beautiful work. And um, we are multidimensional selves. And therefore, um, at some point, we you, you know, might have had a certain experience life um, in which we felt separate in that multi-dimensional self. And so part of it here, um, in being that one continuous multi-dimensional self, is, is healing that personally. Um, and also um, then realizing that it, it, it is, it is um, uh, true to us, but yet false because we were never separated from source. And that is the beautiful joy and bliss and resonance that I feel of true to course source connection in your voice. So I wanted to thank you for bringing this up for everyone. 
because it is a huge part of our own personal journey um, here. And, um, and you have such a beautiful connection with Source. So I can hear it in your voice. Thank you. And this is Oriana, and I wanted to just follow up for a moment as you're new, Daisy. Um, um, and my background passion is in the quantum field. So I'm always looking at it as what is that within the quantum field, that within physics, so that we actually know that originating pattern of life that resets the code. And so the original separation isn't an illusion. There is a separation in the non-existent realm, the non-material realm is known by the ancients. And when all comes into existence, both exist simultaneously, non-existent and existent. And to be in that non-existence that then allows existence to come in from the origin and reset to a higher frequency. That's what I'm speaking to. That's the gap in between that has to be hmm, embodied in order to reset. So, um, and you have to feel your way through. <laughs> Someone had to do it anyway. <laughs> So there is a level at which everything you're saying is so. We're walking through the world doing what it is that is the tuning fork, as the shaman calls it. But there is a deeper level that I've been working with and is my part of this. So I am complete. <laughs> With that, I'm picking up the uh, talking stone, which has been transformed into this, that really wants to be here and say, this is, for me is the presence of the interconnectedness, the connectedness amongst each of us and how our hearts go out to each other. And in the questioning, in the questioning that's in ri arising in our field today, I really recognize how uh, the, reson the, the resonant, the, the connection that I have to that, and how um, the sense of in transforming ourselves, the, the questions get answered. Each step we make, and we're all doing this differently. Um, we're all meant to do this differently. There's many journeys, many paths, many roads to the same destination. And I, um, as we have all collectively come here today in this moment, because we want to be connected. And in that connectedness, we are joining our hearts. And we're walking our path, both simultaneously and individually. And as we do that, it's important to remember, it's important to remember we are not all taking the same path. We're all walking towards the same destination. And in that interconnectedness, we get to learn from one another and we get to discover when what we're hearing is ours and to help transform us and when what we are hearing is for someone else to hear and transform them. And so, um, the questioning is a gift and it allows the transformation to emerge. And I'm complete. I'll pass the big
Okay, this came up earlier today and it's coming in really loudly. It's not just connecting to the heart, it's connecting to the mind. The way that we get there is by joining the two. That's where the real clarity comes. Deepening into heart and connecting it to the mind. This is Henry. <clears throat> this is Henry. Um, I will take the talking heart. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. Being being present in this circle of connection. I love this reading, this initial reading for connecting with each other. And it opened me the, the wave of our in, interconnection becomes the particle as we give our attention to it. And I through this focus, through this awareness, I am feeling during the, in this field, in, in our sharings, the kind of interconnectedness even more. I feel like the word that was used at the initial meditation, the infusion. I'm feeling the infusion of connection in people's presence and people's sharing. I'm feeling and I'm seeing it. And, and just the understanding of all the people that we are, we come in contact with, that we are interconnected with. It, it's feeling right now through this uh, kind of a greater web of connection. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of seeing like, like a circulatory system that I'm really honoring. And I guess this goes to, to also that, that connection uh, from that separation. So this brings to me a clearer feeling and understanding of that connection. And we would not be able to, to, to feel it or understand it without that initial separation that brings that longing, that brings that knowing for, for the true um, deeper connection of, of all of us. So, so, so that longing, that that feeling of separation, we wouldn't be able to become conscious of it without it. So, so, so now we're, we're opening and embarking on new ways of seeing and being in this world and, we're, and the evolution of consciousness and the evolution of love itself that, that we're being able to experience and, and understanding the larger um, village the global village of life as we do this with, with each of our each of our sharings with every um, of the um, the countless acts of love that we each do in our own lives in in um, the, that we're bringing this all together to help to birth the new. So I, I feel complete. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Linda Rosenthal. I'm happy to see you here. And just wanted to add um, to this idea of original separation and how it's carrying over today and how it is being rewired by the youth in around the world. Um, I was just catching a live Facebook feed of American Jewish youth 
who are protesting today um, in a very loving, loving way and saying Palestinians and Israelis must get along. And they're, they're in Washington, they're all around the world today, actually, in, in this peaceful protest. And I thought the only way that we can shift the paradigm of separation is by actually taking steps to do what we're doing, to focus on inclusion and others, all others, that there is no difference there. We just have different stories. And if we can include all beings in this new paradigm, then we're moving towards peace. And then we're moving truly towards an understanding how connected we are. And I just wanted to add that in because I feel it's so important to um, acknowledge and recognize how blessed we are to know to come on this heart resonant call, this global call, and to realize that there are so many hundreds of thousands, even millions of people who don't know about this call, but are trying to find a way to love and to love each other and to make a difference in their own families, in their own communities and around the world. And that was coming up for me um, as this weaving of, yes, we are raising a consciousness and yes, we are doing this for love and in love and and to not forget that there are people who are wanting to love and by their circumstances are not even uh, given an opportunity to stand for peace. They, they try to, and then they're suppressed. So uh, I'm standing for love today on behalf of everyone. And I'm connecting to others in that way. And, um, and just setting out there that our collective consciousness is actually touching people who have never experienced anything as beautiful as the love that we are consciously experiencing now. So I felt that was important to just add to the field and um, I love you all and I'm complete. This is Shelly and um, <clears throat> just following that thread and just um, feeling so deeply the energy of youth as it stands in love and in connection and um, and that there's really only one, if you want to say it this way, I don't know. I never really to totally said it, but there's only one game happening here. One, one game. And that's, you know, to find that journey home to connection to our, to our wholeness. And, and that we be these bamboo vessels, you know, these soft, resilient, open, receptive. And I can notice when my, when my tree gets a little bit, whoop, a little bit too rigid, you know, and that the wind will blow. And e through each one of you, I feel this wind blowing, and it and it just moves me back into that connection. That's what this call is is all about. It's just this opportunity to really tap into this juicy field of love because it is juicy. It, it is 
and I loved, I don't even remember who said it, but this, you know, this intimacy that this, you know, it's that, that, you know, is it possible? And I don't even know, like this is, is it possible that love itself created this, this opening so that we could realize ourselves inside of the separation, you know, that, that was a really interesting drop in, you know, is it possible that, um, you know, that separation, that, that what we think of as separation, because actually that's what, you know, as I come deeper in, I don't, I just think it's, you know, what we're calling an illusion. It's like we understand that there's yin and yang and, and they're actually complementary. One isn't dark and one's light. You know, it doesn't work that way. And we've delineated as human beings like that, but, but actually, you know, um, you know, that, that, love is the composition you know we think of, i'm thinking about being a child and going to school and and writing compositions it's it's like this composition that we're all writing together and learning how to have it be an, an inclusive experience you know even moving out of story you know what is the experience and i think that's what the power in coming in this circle you know focusing on the field is that um, is, is that experience? You know what is really arising as a collective is that full connection within everyone. How is it that we have experiences that uh, are complementary or synchronized with other beings? How is it that this morning I got on a call? where this person had not even known about love lives here, which <laughs> she completely, somehow it totally bypasses. Today she realizes it. She you know, starts to hear about it and then starts sharing just an experience of this live painting that's been happening you know, and growing daily. And she just said, oh my God, I can't believe it. And she went and she pulls behind her this painting that she's painted. You know, again, she doesn't consider herself as an artist, but how is it? This painting is almost exactly the spiral and, and this, this, if you were to see a tree and the, co the core of that tree and how it expands out, you know, that expression of moving from self to each other, to the earth, and, and it doesn't always go in that order, of course, to the sacred within all life. So I just feel that we're coming into this embodied experience, part of this Pra restorative practice that that is happening here the joy is the safety and the freedom to express and to tap into this unified being because it's a being and you know as many said someone just said you know this where we're all sh share the experiences in the destination but the interesting thing about what we're calling destination is it's just one journey and it's the journey home. And when we feel home, we, we have that absolute rippling of that sense of, um, you know, joy, this, you know, joy, joy. Joy isn't something we reach out for, it's right here. You know, there's that softening and there's that opening, just like that beautiful golden flower. So with that I'm complete and I pass that beautiful amethyst heart, put it in the center, I'm complete. The beautiful thing about what you said is the the bounty that I'm feeling here, um, the bounty of each of us gathering together, as you mentioned, the golden flower, and um, how each of us, you know, are part of the petals, and just the beautiful bounty of love um, among us, and the power of this as we all. Um, turn to our own work and all that we do um, in the quantum or our multidimensional lives or our lives here as we integrate. Um, but um, the beautiful thing I, I remember Unity Grace um, once said is, is, uh, is we, as our young people go out and work in peace and different things, is we are all in the canoe. And um, we all get here 
um, together. And, you know, we each are on our path um, individually, um, but the strength of this field um, is certainly um, just absolutely magnificent. And I just want to say something um, that we are complete. And uh, <laughs> yes, we are complete in the miracle. So thank you very much. This is Julie. Um, I'll pick up the heart stone. Love this. It's morphing as we are, um, which makes me want to say it's 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 evolving as we are as we are tuning into that impulse of evolution that's moving amongst us. The only thing I really wanted to add to this thread to the flow of this conversation is that consciousness consciousness isn't something that we have it's what we and the world are and therein lies that peace and that love and um, so here we are in all of our forms together as one really embodying that impulse of creation that's ever moving from simplicity to complexity that makes us experience life in separation. And yet we know that we don't have consciousness. We are consciousness. Brings us back home to that frequency we're talking about. And with that, we are complete. This is June, and with that, that wonderful feeling of being consciousness rather than trying to get there or um, find that place uh, reminds me um, of living in our sacred canoe uh, in shamanism when we work and take people on journeys to find that healing place inside. We always go in our sacred canoe, and and I like to think of living life in that sacred canoe, not that we get in and out of it, but that we live in it as much as possible. And that wherever the canoe takes us, whether it's on the main river or a side creek, that we hold that consciousness and we hold all life sacred. Um, sometimes it's really hard to do that. Uh, but keeping that in mind just really helps me to stay present with what's going on. And uh, I couldn't, come in a little sooner today because I've been listening to you from the dentist's office <laughs> and I'm out now and back in my sacred canoe. So uh, I just love listening and being with all of you and I'm complete. This is Henry again. Maybe that's what the uh, Beatles were intending when they said, we all live in a yellow submarine. <laughs> um, a sacred canoe. Um, that, that, I love that, that's beautiful. And, and also, I guess, you know, that idea of moving from simplicity to complexity and I feel like we're moving back to kind of an integrated simplicity. So, um, you know, of, of that wholeness. So, so we're reconnecting with that, that original simplicity. Um, uh, so I, I, I feel complete.
This is Julie again. I feel to share um, just to pull the thread back to, um, since we're coming back to that simplicity, back to this beautiful theme that Michelle brought us into of the connection with one another. And I just want to share a quote from um, Jude Caravan, who says that um, we can continue to fall into fear or we can come together and leap into love. And she believes we can only leap into love together, which is really coming back into our wholeness, our completeness, that simplicity and, and unity that we're talking about with this whole worldview. And I'm complete. I'll grab that amethyst heart there a minute. Um, the Beatles, you know, also said, all there is is love. And I, I feel the simplicity. I've kind of been feeling into that for a long time. Because for a while, you know, I was out there, got to do this, got to organize this, got to make that happen. And I, re I realized that surrender is the way. I can't usually make things happen. They come into, they fall into alignment when the timing is right on all levels. But all I can do is uh, hone in my timing with how I, my timing is with, uh, I guess uh, what I'm really kind of, from the poem that Michelle began with is realizing that we are, you know, there isn't a whole lot of fun. I guess, you know, it took me a week to find the live button on the, on the whole experience, you know. So as much as I want to tap in every day at nine, it seems like I may be doing something else. And then, but I got the message, you know, send your vibes. That's what, it, that's what it's about. You know, you don't have to have your mug on the Zoom thing necessarily. It's about tuning in to that, to that heart space. And I mean, I think for all of it, we know that the longest journey, the hero's journey, if you will, is from the head to the heart. And how my, my prayer is always, may I speak, you know, may I, this be in a line and may they, I and be, may I then be able to articulate it in such a manner that other people could get it. And I, I, I don't know, it's just the liberation of all you have to be is yourself is is so you know because i haven't i mean I, it's like i haven't bought the banner and the coffee mug and i thought about going out in my garden and moving all the rocks around to say love lives here plant the picture you know but it, it was it's not a good use of my time and energy and so i mean and not that i don't think this is important um it's just kind of that interesting You know, I probably would have been cool to go out and create something in rock that looks like love sludge here, but it would have taken me a day or two, and then, you know, I wouldn't have got this and that, and I wouldn't have felt. Anyway, I've, I've taken up my time. I think you've been listening, and I would return that, that heart, hoping I said something, as always. <laughs> This is Shelly, and I'm having this realization that the pause is about um, the receiving, you know, the receivership. The pause is um, where the where the laughter and the joy and the and the remembrance happen, right? Um, so I'm just uh, enamored by the magnificence of this field this morning. You know, just that we're all unique strands of an undivided whole, you know, or we can think of it as uh, holons or rays of that full spectrum, however you want to look at it, experience it. Um, it's really beautiful. So, uh, yeah, so I just hand back that morphing heart and uh, keep on... 
keep on bringing this vibrational field forward. And it's true exactly what's being said. It's, it's not about the t-shirts that say love lives here. <laughs> <laughs> it just came in the mail. Actually, it's been here and I haven't put it on till today. Um, and that, that, you know, our experience really is an organic unfolding. And if we were to really trust that, what would that be like? You know, that we don't feel that pressure that we bring upon ourselves, that I have brought in on myself for so many years, the, pref the pressure to be something, be someone, you know, speak it in a particular way, you know, like somebody else. Um, I think this is the unraveling. And I love, you know, the simplicity, complexity, but it's, I also, you know, it's kind of like this movement is always going in all directions. So sometimes I feel like that complexity brings me back to that place of simple, you know, and, and we've been playing with that, this toroidal field of energy and what that's like and how, you know, maybe there is a toroidal languaging that is inclusive of the movement of the whole, which is always moving. We, we slice it and we see the infinity loop, right? <laughs> we see that infinity loop. But when we experience that as a whole, it's, it's, it's a divine movement of, um, of consciousness like it was being shared. You know, we are that. You know, we are made up of atoms and electrons that are constantly moving in that toroidal nature. So it's kind of, it feels a little, you know, slightly, sh it shifts in how it wants to express itself in right timing. So, and I'm learning that, you know, and I feel like we all each here are, are learning that, you know, how to become that amorphic consciousness that's, and I don't even know if I just made that word up, but a spirillic. <laughs> we'll go back to the spirillic um, consciousness that's always raising to its highest vibration it's the natural way of things if we allow it so pass the talking stick and then um for one or two more shares and then we're going to open it up usually with this call for people who um haven't had a chance to share or have just learning about this experience and even if it's a presencing of your name um we'll hold space for that um, we are complete <laughs> I want to say that we were brilliant in bringing in chaos, shura or shuntai, shura or shuntai, with joy and laughter around it. So I am going to take that into myself that when I have chaos, to be joyful in that moment and try and discern into that mo in the discerning process to hold the joy even in the chaos and the frustration and, and to have that laughter and silliness around that. Grateful for that being part of this field today. And I, this is Soriana, I would like to bring the joy hmm, through the deepest sense of separation where what I felt into when I asked the question originally was that, oh, there was a deep forgiving myself. Oh, that's the pain that's there that keeps that separation feeling too deep that'll huh but by going all the way into it and through it there is a sense of releasing into what is that hmm that is infinite still hmm what makes it all move where movement is a miracle whoa and then I began to see and feel the yin-yang symbol, but as if it were moving away from me, expanding into this spiral, where the field of dark expanded to a point of light that expanded to a point of dark that expanded. And it just kept going as it did internally, so that it scaled in, incrementally smaller to where even the way we word it, it collapsed into the non-existent space. The collapsing is as important as the expansion. They're one and the same, that movement of the toroid that we see only one part of usually in our perspective, but when you feel it 
and feel through the gap that feels so deeply and then feels into the level of healing, which is the joy in, oh, oh, we're all one. And maintaining the autonomy of being separate that holds all existence in its shaping that comes into form. Whoa, if we can hold the image of God, whoa, what is that to bring that original life into this world? And if original life shows up on this planet and 3.8 billion years later, all of this is possible, what is it to have that originating life force, the <coughs> way to live, the will to live, the world has a will to live, and awakening that will within each of us at that depth allows the whole world to resonate with this new sense of, yeah, I can do something better than what's currently going on. There's that image of God that's a that's a it's a geometric pattern much like a iris of an eye and we can open it to receive the miracle and i am complete we are <laughs> <laughs> all right so just give your each one of you give yourself a heart hug and we just want to take a minute of silence and allow those who haven't said just a simple hello or just an inspiration, a line of, or so of information, we want to honor the time here as well. But just um, let's take a breath, those of us that have shared and open, you can, um, those of you that haven't said hello can take yourselves off mute and um, share. And then we will, we close this call with a very joyous uh, choir of yum. Aloha, it's Deborah, and I just am going to say hey, hey to Pele, and uh, much love to all. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. This is Dinama, and I invite us to the we in the stillness. Okay, anyone else? <clears throat> well, we're grateful, we're grateful, we're grateful this morning here. And um, we're here every Monday, so please share it out. Let people know that they can come and have this experience. And of course, we're here every Monday during the 40 days um, as well, uh, sorry, every day for the morning resonance experience that is being offered at 8 a.m. and uh, Pacific time. So come join us. Many people are still just finding out about Love Lives Here. 40 days of reconnection. So please feel free to share that out. Send emails to a couple of people that you haven't touched yet because you'd be surprised. This morning, that's what happened. Someone had no idea and now she's so excited. So with that, let's end. Everyone can take themselves off mute. And we love to end this call with a choir of yum. 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 yum, yum, yum.